In the meantime, I do want to bring in a guest here. Shlomo Amsalom is a U.S. resident who is serving in the Israel Defense Forces. He joins us live to talk more about what he is seeing there. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. My pleasure. Appreciate you having me on. Of course. So first off, can you start off by telling me how you found out about that horrible attack by Hamas on Israel back on October 7th? Um, I actually was on my way to the temple and my friend said, hey, Shlomo, like, come see this. And I was confused. I thought he was just wasting my time. Like, listen, I'm late. I'm late. He's like, no, no, like, you should look, look, you should take a look at this. And he started showing me videos. At first, I thought it was fake. It just seemed so surreal. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, sorry if you hear the booms in the back. That is actual fire. Um, so just in case you guys get concerned, it's, it's legitimate. But uh, as the day progressed, we just kept watching more and more, and it, it became a, uh, a very horrific reality. And I do want to say, if you need to take cover or anything like that, please let us know. Just take off. You know, we want to make sure that you're safe. Um, what were your first thoughts when you did hear about the attack and you realized just how serious it was? So uh, I happened to actually have been with another friend who volunteered with me in the same exact unit and he was with me for the holidays actually. And our first immediate response was, let's get in touch with our units. Let's see how we can get back there. Let's see how we can join and, and do what we can to make the situation as, as best as we possibly can. <laughs> What is it like to be over there right now as this is going on? Is it anything that you've ever experienced before? Have you ever experienced anything like this? So and I would actually say it's nothing like my regular service. I mean, I was here during another operation, which in Hebrew, uh, honestly, I don't even remember what they called it in English, Guardians of the Walls, I believe, which was something like heated, but nothing even remotely close to this. The thought that there's a maraud of various rockets or missiles or even people like terrorists just trying to cross the border on a regular basis and on a nightly basis we have to expect going on a full out gun to gun battle it's it's a concerning feeling it's obviously not something anyone wants to experience but at the end of the day we're here to do what we need to do to defend the people and defend the state we've heard from a lot of people over in israel right now that the sirens are just constant folks are going into their bomb shelters and and just trying to make sure that they are staying safe is that kind of what you're hearing are you hearing a lot of sirens where you are um to be honest I, i'm at a place where sometimes you don't even hear the siren it's just a boom because it's such short distance so like you may i've already heard three since we've been here but it's just a consistent uh, back and forth. I mean, obviously, as a soldier, it's a little different. We don't necessarily always get to go to, uh, like, a, a shelter or something. Sometimes we have to stay where we are and, and be ready because normally what comes after the booms is, in a lot of cases, a terrorist. So we have to be there to stop the next step of whatever they're planning. What made you want to fight for Israel and be there to fight against Hamas? What was it inside of you that said, I need to do this? Um, to be completely honest, I'm a patriot for America. I, I was born and raised and currently still live in New York. I'm very passionate about um, everything that, that, that just is right. That's how you're raised in America. That's the type of people that we are. So in America's case, thank God, there's a lot of soldiers. But if the same thing happened in America, I would join the forces the same day as well. At the end of the day, we were raised and brought up with to do right and do good and protect the people that need to be protected and do the right thing. In Israel's case, every soldier really does make a difference. It is a small country with a very small combat force so every soldier makes a difference but if it was israel if it's america it doesn't really matter at the end of the day it's about doing the right thing and protecting innocent civilians from being genuinely just murdered and giving them the opportunity to live a peaceful life what does it mean to you and the other soldiers to see the folks who are rallying together to show their support for Israel? The fact that you have uh, President Biden, for instance, who did go over there to Israel to pledge his support and make sure that everyone across the world does know that the U.S. stands with Israel. What does it mean for you specifically to see that kind of support? I mean, first and foremost, the United States is obviously my home, so it's a def it hits me home in a different way than anybody else, of course, here. Um, but most of all, you know, I know that there's also Marines here and various uh, United States servicemen here, and a lot of them are at risk right now because of the current situation, and they shouldn't be at any risk. And for me, it kind of hurts to hear that there's a lot of cases where Iran is threatening us on our own soil. Like, we are by far the most powerful military in the world, and I don't think that any United States serviceman should be at risk at any point. Like, we should definitely make that a point in, in the United States, and we should show our enemies that they sh they're, we're not one to dance with, you know? like. You, there's a reason that I'm not part of the United States military because I'm so confident in their ability and they don't need me. 
And if they did, I would be there in a second. Someone actually reached out to me after my last interview and said, hey, we're the United States Marines in a certain area and we're, we're rooting for you. And I told him, you know, for me, they're just as much a soldier and, and brother in arms as the guys around me right here. But I really think that the United States needs to take a stronger military stance to protect their soldiers. There's a lot of misinformation out there about the war between Israel and Hamas. What do you want to make sure that people at home who are watching know for sure and just kind of hammer home and say, this is really the case. This is not misinformation that is circulating. This is the reality of the situation. I mean, I think the first and most important thing is that everyone should understand that we're not happy about casualties on either side. No one wants to see a dead baby or a dead person in, at any age on either side. Civilians are not the goal of this. But unfortunately, just like Nazi Germany, no one was counting the civilian lives who were dying in Germany. And, and if you take it mathematically speaking, in Gaza, the 141 square miles, and there are 2.2 million people in, their, in, like, in that area. So that means every... Every square mile is about 15,000 people, and I believe to date there's just under or just around 8,000 people dead, half of which I believe are terrorists. Considering the amount of missiles and rockets and everything that's been done there, I mean, obviously no one is happy, and I'm not discrediting any of those loss of lives. It's very heartbreaking, and I'm not someone who, who believes that any civilian should, should die, just like I mentioned previously. But at the end of the day, like when there's something that's just such a drastic issue, kind of like the Nazis versus Hamas or ISIS, we have to do what we have to do to get to the head of the snake and kill it off. In this case, they're hiding in a very densely populated area, but I think if you just understood the math and the numbers, like I work in finance, so that's just the way I look at it. Like you couldn't expect anything more for in terms of trying to do our best to keep civilians out of, out of danger to the best of our ability. My last question for you, uh, we did hear from Netanyahu over the weekend, and he said that we are moving into the, quote, next phase of the war. What does that mean for you specifically? I know you can't give details as to what you are doing, but just to hear that you are going to move into the next phase, what does that mean for you personally? For us, we're here at the north, so our main, our main purpose is just to keep this border safe and to prevent anyone from crossing it or any missiles or to deter Hezbollah from really taking this one step further into the war and escalating things. We have no interest in that. Like I mentioned previously, our goal is here to defend. We don't want a war. We don't want people to die. We will fight if we need to, but that's obviously our goal is peace. We just want people to be able to return their, to their homes without a concern of going to sleep and being murdered in the morning. You know, in the end of the day, everyone just wants to live a normal life, I would expect, on both sides of the border. I don't wish anything bad for any regular civilian on the Lebanese side or in the Gaza side. I hope, I hope that we can get to a day where everyone lives peacefully in their own way with any without any issues no one wants no one on our side is looking for death you know we just want to be safe and we want to know that we can go to sleep and wake up in our homes or whatever those israelis choose for them to be and not have to worry all right shlomo thank you so much for taking the time to join us here i know there's a lot going on there so we appreciate your time is there anything else you want to add before i let you go um i would say something that personally has been been very frustrating to see from here on a regular basis, there's just been so much anti-Zionist, -Zion, anti anti-Semitic, and anti-Muslim and anti-Arab. At the end of the day, just worldwide, you know, from a lot of people are, are protesting, and I don't really think they know what they're protesting for. At the end of the day, if you're an American who has, I mean, anyone in the world, but I can't speak for people in other nations, but let's say as an American, a lot of people are just rioting against things that they don't really know about. And I, I really just hope that people can understand that at the end of the day, people are people, and no one should die based on who they are or where they came from. I don't care if someone is a Jew or a Muslim or... Asian or wherever they came from. At the end of the day, if we're Americans and we believe that everything that America stands for, we believe in freedom. We believe that every man is created equal. So how is it that people are are happy about death and murder and chanting for things for death? You know, in the end of the day, like we just all want to be peaceful and living normal lives. Like war should not be part of our day to day trajectory or thoughts or anything. Like people should be able to go to work and build a family and be happy. And I don't like and I think it's something that a lot of people are protesting on either side should really sit down and consider like are you protesting for the right things? Are you, do you have the right intentions in mind? Like, does someone want to chant, like, why put the Jews in the garbage can? Or, or the fact that the little girl who was Muslim, I believe her mother also, was also sad, like, heartbreaking. It's not something that anyone like me wants to ever see. We just want peace. We want to live normal lives. We want to get back to our lives and continue with on. All right, Shlomo, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. U.S. resident there fighting for Israel. Uh, we appreciate it. Please, please stay safe out there. I appreciate it. I appreciate the time and uh, hope to see you guys soon.